Hi, we are at Willow Springs campsite in Glencorrig, South Wales. We're doing a bit of mountain biking, a bit of camping, and it's a lovely place to stay. But that's not the purpose of this video. This is an impromptu video about an eco solar drying room, which Mark, who owns and runs Willow Springs campsite, has been is in the middle of constructing. Now. Uh, Willow Springs, the ethos at Willow Springs is to make a minimum impact on the environment, so be as ecologically sensitive as possible. And there's all sorts of stuff in place uh, to facilitate that, and maybe we'll do some other videos on some of the other stuff, but today we're going to look at the Eco Solar Drying Room. Now it's a bit of an impromptu video this, so I apologise for the sound quality. Uh, I don't have my normal microphone and all that kind of thing, I'm just using the little microphones on the GoPro which, which aren't great so I apologize in advance for that I'll do what I can in the editor to clean it up but I thought this was a good opportunity to share a really cool project uh, and, and talk to Mark about it so let's go and find Mark okay so we find Mark here's Mark Hello. Uh, we have to be a bit creative with the camera on this occasion because we're doing this in the middle of the COVID situation so, um, and I've just realised I'm gesticulating with the hand that's holding the camera, so apologies for that. Um, we've got to stay two metres apart, so hence we're going to have to be switching around a little bit. So, um, Mark, first of all, if you tell us a little bit about Willow Springs and your approach to doing things in an ecologically sensitive way. Yeah, we, we've always had a conscience um, to drive the campsite um, in terms of respecting the environment and what we you know what, what part we can play in, in protecting and respecting the environment so we do full recycling here not an option um, and we encourage people to recycle and show them you know the benefits of recycling um, some of the stuff that we've actually put in on the campsite as well we've got a biodigester that services all the waste um, we have four kilowatts of solar um, to help power the campsite as well as obviously our home uh, and on top of that, we've had a solar eye boost fitted so that with, when the water is heated, we're trying where we can to not uh, export any power generated from the solar panels. Um, that then is diverted into the solar eye boost and then we'll heat the hot water using the motion heater. Brilliant. So what's the, what's a solar eye boost? It's basically, it, all it is, it's a nice bit of kit that, um, that you put uh, near your fuse board and obviously near your hot water cylinder. Uh, it measures what you're generating and what you're exporting. And whatever the deficit is, it will divert that into your immersion heater. So um, quite often we can have, on a good sunny day, we can have up to 10, 12 kilowatts of water heated um, just using the eye boost. That's really good. So yeah, so we don't waste anything that we generate. That's fantastic. So 12 kilowatts, even in a good wet uh, South Wales yeah, day. Yeah, on, on a normal, I suppose, you know, on a, on a, on a wet, windy or horrible day, you, you may only get a couple of kilowatts. But, um, but yeah, certainly during the summertime, um, we don't use uh, a boiler in the house at all because, the, you know, generally speaking, there's enough there to heat the showers. Brilliant. Um, but also it will do a huge portion um, of, the, of the hot water for the campsite as well. Fantastic. Um, so, as you can see, uh, Mark's a pretty creative guy with systems, uh, and that's why we wanted to do this uh, this this interview and this talk. So, the one that, the thing that we were talking about earlier, which I thought would be really interesting for this channel, is Mark's new project of an eco solar drying room, which we're going to take a look at shortly. So, Mark, first of all, can you introduce us to the idea of the uh, eco drying room? Well, I think, you know, being where we are in Wales, we sometimes get some inclement weather. It doesn't happen very often. Occasionally. It doesn't happen very often. Um, but, yeah, for people, obviously, that are tenting, um, you know, you, you need, ideally, they need somewhere where they can dry clothes. Some kind of laundry area. We get a lot of mountain bikers, we get a lot of walkers, geocachers, dog walkers. And in the inclement weather, they're going to get messy, they're going to get mucky. So... So yeah, you know, trying to help them with their tent space, uh, keeping their tents dry, a drying room was obviously, or a laundry room in some way, was, was obviously a, you know, a big part of our plans for the campsite. The thing was, how do you do that with, um, with a conscience to the environment? We didn't want to go down the route of just putting in a, a, a tumble dryer on a washing machine. 
because it uses a whole lot of energy. Sure. There's, an, there's an element of maintenance and, and you know to follow, and also the fact that only one person can use it at a time. So, so you know, we thought, how can we do this and still you know, be environmentally uh, you know aware? So, I had the idea that we should be using the resources that we have around us because we're on spring water. Our water is even in the peak of summer, barely a couple of degrees if that above freezing. So I have the potential to create a natural dehumidifier if I can find something to put the spring water in and then develop some kind of thermal current to, to circulate the warm wet air through a dehumidification process and back around into the drying room again. So that was the idea. It would be a walk-in drying room so the campsite can just hang their stuff up. If I can keep the power consumption as low as possible, which is, you know, which was always, you know, potential because you're only at best looking at um, an extract and a or a fan and an extract fan to be able to create that thermal current, um, and then it means heating it and taking the water out of the air. So I thought, well, I can do that with the spring water on the dehumidification side. It was just then, how are we going to heat the air without using uh, some form of electric heating or gas heating? So, so we're going to we're going to the, the drying room itself was going to be in three stages. The initial build concept, um, getting the circulation right, then introducing the dehumidification, and then some kind of solar air heater. Something that would just raise the temperature enough to be able to um, direct over a cooling plate so that we could get the water in the air to condensate. Fantastic. Sounds really good. So it's partly done. It's about a third of the way through, yeah. would you say? So about a third of the way through. So let's go and take a look at it and then we'll we'll just have a look, uh, have a talk about what those what those things mean in a bit more detail. Facility shelter there, which half of which has now become the drying room. The bitumen roof boards on top will hold um, what will be the actual solar air heater. So you've got a nice big space there on the, on the roof there, which is almost sort of, it's probably just about south facing. So we'll catch the sun most of the day. Okay, this is where the action happens. So essentially this section here, so from the, that wall to talk about the section here, is actually the drying room. Inside this section here, the small panel, is where the dehumidification will happen. Um, and potentially, we're thinking that probably if we are going to use uh, the roof for solar air heating, we will pipe the hot air down through the roof into the top of the drying chamber then. And so, talk us through what's, uh, what's going on up on, the, up on the panel there. Right, for the time being, because it was always only ever going to be solar powered, I, to calculate exactly what I was going to need, panel size and battery size, it was just so much easier to mains wire it first, because then I can just put a meter on it, see exactly what it draws and exactly what output I'm going to need, then I can size solar array for it. Um, my basic calculations were that it was never going to exceed more than about 120 to 130 watts, um, which, which wouldn't be constant, I have to say, but at peak times. And, wh and which is already drastically less than most commercial drying rooms, which are a few kilowatts, I would say. At the moment, though, without, uh, without supplementary heating, I've actually got it down to probably less than 60 watts. Which is amazing. If you think about the minimising impact on the environment, 60 watts for a drying room this size, we'll have a look in a minute, is amazing. Obviously, one of the key factors to the room was insulation. Everything is heavily insulated, so whatever little heat we have, we retain it as best we can. So this compartment, because it's not finished, hasn't been fully insulated. These sections of the roof have been insulated, the floor has been insulated, but the door hasn't been insulated. So what we essentially have this side is at the top is the extract, which will then pass down through the heat exchanger plates, which will be filled with spring water. Spring and, water in those, yeah. Uh, which will act as my cooling plate. So that's where the water will condensate, hopefully. Uh, and then there is a drip tray underneath which goes out to the drain when it's fitted. And then so, so we'll be able to get the water out of the building so there's less chance of it being recaptured back up into the air. Back through a fan, 
So the water, where does the water go after it's naturally it? Drained. So it's naturally drained off. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, and then fan then, which will create, which again is part of the whole thermal cycle. Now it's, it's quite on the cards that I don't need an extract and a fan. It could be, you know, that, that fan there will be adequate. I could possibly take out the extract, uh, extract fan and just have a grill in there and I will still be able to create. Still get some sort of flow. That might even reduce, the, you know, obviously the power again by maybe another 10, 15 watts. Although if you can solar power the, both the fans, the extractor probably makes it more efficient. Well, I the idea, what I like about the extractor is once, once I've got this section done, this will actually be boxed up. So you are forcing the wet, warm air down through the heat exchanger place. Yeah. So rather than, it, it just seems more natural, you know, it's more accurate to be able to do that. So you are literally trying to get every ounce of moisture out of the air yeah. before it comes back at the bottom and then blown back through into the into the heating area and drying area. Super cool. Well, we can also, I mean, there we can take it, you know, lost a little further as well. At the moment, the solid, there's just a simple solenoid on there that will engage um, to regenerate the cool water through the heat exchangers. I can fit stats and could do it manually, and could do it automatically. So it, it'll reach temperature, it'll automatically discharge, refill with, or recharge with fresh cold spring water. Um, until it reaches another temperature, stat will turn the solenoid off, and then you'll be back to normal. So that will be a constant recycling situation. I don't know how many times that's going to happen through the day. Mm. Um, but rather than me manually at the moment, or as I'm anticipating, manually recharging, that's obviously going to be a section that we'll have to do, make it more automatic, because it will make it more efficient. So you're minimising the use of the spring water as well, essentially. You've not got a constant flow no, 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 through there. Not, no. You've got until yeah. it, you, you just put in as much as it needs yeah. to dehumidify right. and then... And of course, yeah. that will depend how many times that charges and recharges um, will depend on the temperature outside, how much how many clothes are in the drying room, how many times the drying room door has been opened, what the, you know, the cupboard temperature, if you like, is going to be like. So there'll be a lot of factors. So, yeah, to, make, to, to have them on stats, you know, to have most of the stuff on stats is going to make a lot of difference. It'll just make it so much more efficient. Yeah. And of course, all that can be solar powered. Yeah. So yeah. everything's yeah. There's no no mains draw at all. No. At the there. moment, we've got um, you know the the the, back, the mains draw at the moment. You've got about 930 watts at the moment, which it's pulling at the moment. But you know the best part of probably 900 watts of that at the moment is the oil fire, or, or, or oil filled radiator, which is providing the heat. So the next phase will be to get the heat generators yeah. using the solar yeah. solar system. Let's have a look inside the drying room and we'll have a chat about how that might work um, as well. Okay, going in. Right, so here's going the in. room. Open the door. Again, door has to be finished, has to be insulated at the moment, it's just a standard stock door. Micro switches set there to make sure that the lights come on only when the lights need to be on, which is when you open the door. So again. Until the door closes, the lights go off. So again, minimising the amount of power used. Cool. Um, there's also another micro switch there just to stop the fan from running, because it seems pointless trying to blow the air through with the door open. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, of course. Um, and then at the moment, we're just using maidens people to hang the stuff on but we have been we are going to be putting up a, a, a pole system to get more clothes in for ratio of area then you get them higher up as well yeah. Kind of. yeah so yeah. you've got the extractor at the top and you've got the fan at the bottom so what you're hopefully what we're creating is this air circulation moving around the room out through the top down through the what will be the humidification uh, humid dehumidification and then dry warm air back through Above us, we'll hopefully we when we get the solar air heat done, uh, will be piped in, so we'll have warm air being piped in. And again, we can do that on stats to make sure that you're not actually pulling colder air in; you're only pulling air that's warmer than what's in the room. And again, making it more efficient. Otherwise, you could lose hot air. You're losing otherwise, aren't you? And have you thought about um, sort of emitting the warm air at various points along yeah. the way? rather than it just being a single input and anchor. Yeah, we, uh, initially I was going to put fans in the, in the floor and then have the air drawn up. So it was, it was you know, that situation of um, you know, different air parts of the room being blown with warm air. But apart from the fact it was a lot more complicated to do and a lot more expensive, 
and more moving parts because it probably would have ended up being more different fans all drawing through mm. the parts. Um, the idea that that thermal circulation should be enough for this whole room to dry close. So do you think you've got enough um, sort of moving through from the fan down there up to there? Do you think it's, it's moving along the room and up? Yeah. Because of the uh, the speed of the current. Yeah, I've got. I did, a, I did put a speed controller on the fan, so you can you can adjust that. And I think uh, I think the fan pulls something around forty about forty two watts, which is really good. Yeah. And it's actually yeah. quite low. Okay. So I could possibly downsize the fan if I did another version. I'd probably downsize the fan because it would need to be potentially that big. Yeah. But yeah. Okay, so that is how that's how it's going so far. Uh, while we're in the drying room, Mark was saying about the next phase, which is getting the solar heating uh, in place, so that there's no mains connection whatsoever. So, Mark, do you want to talk us through um, how it's going to work? Without doubt, this is the hardest bit. Because, I'm sure uh, because it's solar related. Um, you know, it's it's obvious that in the winter time, when it is likely to be wetter. When it is hard to dry your clothes, you're going to have less you know, solar energy to, to cool upon to actually heat. So there is a little bit of, um, you know, it's a little bit of an anomaly to know exactly how big a panel, solar heater panel to build, and the type of panel that you know we could build to do it. There's loads of different ways that we can use solar to heat air. You know, we can do it via, you know, um, we could heat hoses. Water, water filled hoses and you know it'd be very similar to a, you know, like an underfloor heating system um, or we can heat we can heat the air space and then duct that into the you know, the drying room area it's just knowing what is going to be more efficient and it could be a, a you know even a mix of both those um, uh, both those elements which is what I'm probably leaning towards mm. the solar air heaters have been around for quite a while and you'll see loads of them on YouTube People start off with sort of tin cans, um, and they have you know progressed. There's lots of great reviews showing stats and you know, heating and that kind of thing, ambient temperatures. Um, so I think what I think I'm going to try is where people have used the solar air heater with an absorber mat that sits off the back of the panel. Um, those seem to be you know the most efficient, but I'm just wondering whether I can replace that mat, that absorber backing mat, with um, hose filled uh, mat instead so so that we not only will be heating the air we'll also be heating the water as well so and that would allow, yeah that would allow me to take the hose then you know the heated hose if you like down into the chamber itself and possibly use it you know like underfloor heating so it will radiate heat from from hose upwards or uh, potentially I could make um, uh, boot or shoe hooks with some pop pipe uh, where people can just hang their, their shoes and boots, uh, uh, just fit their shoes and boots over to dry because they would be physically heated by the coil. Um, and of course, anything over and above that will be ambient, ambiently heated in the room anyway. And then with the heated air a section of the, of the um, panel, we'll just duck that in to the furthest point probably in the room uh, to just build up that. So remember that a lot of the principle of the drying room is not wasting anything that's already in there as well as an awful lot of insulation in there. So hopefully, whatever we put in there, we're not losing. We just need to keep using it so that that, that will hopefully you know, create the efficiencies you know, to be, for it to be able to work you know, without any mains uh, intervention through the time. So we talked about um, the closed loop and trying to maximise um, efficiency and not create waste so all of those things really you know go fit into that um, fit into that concept don't yeah they? yeah absolutely so and the 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 boot heating thing 
I think is a particularly good idea because they take so much longer yeah. to dry than everything else, don't they? So if you've got a, a heated pipe, it's going to uh, increase the efficiency of drying so people will be yeah, well, in direct, and out quicker. Yeah, you're direct drying, aren't you, effectively? Yeah. That's what it is. So, yeah. Yeah, so it will be hopefully a lot more efficient and uh, and then you can get a, a better turnover of, you know, throughout the campsite, people needing their stuff. You know, it will, uh, it will dry quicker. Things will dry. If you just blow warm air over it, things are going to dry. But it's being able to get them to dry as quickly as you can, as efficiently as possible, uh, without really using anything other than the natural resources around us. That's the real kind of three parts to trying to get it to work. Brilliant. And when do you think, what time scale? <laughs> will, it, will it be ready for the next time we, uh, we come down? I don't know when you're coming next. <laughs> We're thinking January at the minute. Um, yeah, well, I'm hoping that certainly um, it would be nice to be able to get the, the the air heater side done through the winter because obviously that would be the worst case scenario. I know what um, if I need to make adjustments. I know that it's not going to be a problem in the summertime or the warmer months. But yeah, the winter is the key. So probably I'll be working on on the air heating, the solar air heater next. Um, the dehumidification part is relatively straightforward. It is literally just pumping water into the plates, um, and then either for the time being maybe having like a, a a manual timer system every hour it recharges until I can spend a bit more time and, and put stats in and make it a lot more efficient. So, so yeah, I'm thinking that I'll probably be the, the, the air heater because that's what's using power at the moment. And I need to get, I need to get that. Off. That's the main, yeah, that's the main yeah. impetus. So, uh, we will do a follow up video in January and we'll see where they've got to. Pressure's on. Uh, winter's the, the optimum time as well for a, for a drying room. So let me, just, just to summarise uh, the concept and just fill me in or correct me if I've, I've got it wrong, we've got a, a, a space which is as insulated as possible. Um, there's dehumidification, there's, a, there's a, a warm air input into the space and then extraction out of the space. The extraction passes through dehumidification using natural spring water um, through the dehumidification plates, through yeah. condensation of the humidity in the air. Yeah. The aim for that is for it to be thermostatically controlled so that, so that it maximizes the efficiency of the, of the, of the system. Yeah. So that when the spring water uh, in the plates warms up too much, it's taken out and fresh cold water is put in. That dehumidified air then passes through the heating system and then back into the, into the drying room. And hopefully at the moment that the heater is a mains heater, but the next step is this is going to be a solar system with an absorber map and possibly a combination of um, heated fluid, which goes through pipes to heat boots and coats and that kind of thing, and an air system which circulates air efficiently through the, through the space. Brilliant. I couldn't have put it better myself. Awesome. So that is the... Uh, that is a brilliant example of a creative systems project. So I hope you found that useful and interesting. Put some comments below if uh, you've got any thoughts on that or any suggestions which might help. I'm sure that would be gratefully uh, appreciated. Do give us a like, uh, subscribe for more content and don't forget to have a look at Willow Springs campsite on the internet. It's a gorgeous place, a fantastic place to camp right near all the Glencorig and Avon mountain bike trails. It's just a beautiful spot. So have a look for Willow Springs and thanks for watching. I'm always. Uh, I can't believe you got me to do this. <laughs> <laughs>